Welcome to Robinson Foundry. My name is Seth Robinson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I used Lost PLA to turn this 3D printed orangutan skull into aluminum. This skull was printed using a plastic called PLA, which stands for polylactic acid. PLA is a great material for this process because of its relatively low melting point. After the model was done printing, I glued the two parts of the brain case together and then lightly sanded down some of the more noticeable layer lines on both parts of the skull. Then I went to work gluing on some 3D printed pieces called sprues, pouring basins, and feeders, which are needed to get the metal into the mold, as well as preventing the metal from shrinking in the wrong places as it solidifies. I also attached some pieces of PLA filament to act as vents, which will prevent air from being trapped inside the mold when it's filled with metal. Three D printing is a great way to make very realistic looking models. However, models usually have very noticeable layer lines from the printing process. I wanted to experiment with hiding the layer lines by covering these models with a thin layer of wax. It was tricky getting a thin, uniform layer evenly spread over the entire skull. I ended up using a heat gun and paintbrush to spread the wax out. It took some trial and error, but I eventually got it to work. The next step was to dip the skull into a ceramic material called suspend slurry. After letting the first coat dry, I dipped the skull into the slurry again, but this time, I sprinkled it with silica sand, which will help build up a thick shell. The skull was dipped into the slurry and then coated with sand a total of five times, followed up by one final coat without sand. Once the shell was completely dry, I placed it in my kiln and then heated it until the wax and plastic mostly melted out. I then removed the bulk of the molten plastic, which accumulated at the bottom of the kiln, and then fired the shells for a few hours at around 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, or 900 degrees Celsius. This vitrifies the shell, turning it into a ceramic that can withstand the heat of the molten aluminum. As the shells were heating up in the kiln, I started melting some aluminum in my homemade furnace. When the aluminum was melted, I removed the crucible from the furnace and then checked to make sure that the metal was at the right temperature. 
I was aiming for about 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 750 degrees Celsius. I removed the shells from the kiln while they were still hot, buried them in sand, and then poured in the molten aluminum. After letting the castings cool, I went to work removing the shell, which is always exciting. The top part of the skull filled out really nicely, but unfortunately the jaw did not. I believe that this is because the mold was poorly designed, and as the molten aluminum solidified and shrunk, it pulled metal away from the teeth and into the thicker parts of the jaw. Unfortunately, I had to completely start over with the jaw. I repeated the process that I used to make the mold for the first jaw, but this time I rearranged the placement of the sprue and feeder. After melting out the wax and plastic, the shell was very badly cracked. This is because as the plastic melted, it expanded, cracking the shell. Fortunately, I was able to fix the cracks by painting on some more slurry and then firing the shell again. My second attempt at casting the jaw was more successful, however the casting had very poor surface finish. There are many reasons why this could have happened, but my best guess is that the shell was just too hot when I poured in the metal. I decided to just live with the poor surface finish and see what I could do about fixing some of the holes. After removing some of the excess metal and filing down the teeth, I tried filling in some of the holes with an aluminum solder. It actually worked well enough to hide some of the imperfections, and after sanding everything down, the solder was hardly noticeable. The last step was to use some Scotch-Brite to polish the aluminum as best I could, and the skull was finished. I'm happy with how this skull turned out. It was a ton of work, but I learned a lot along the way. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Tell me what you think in the comments and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching.